um, I, I want to talk about uh, the uh, QSPI Max uh, 2 I, I built. Basically, uh, I, I wanted to uh, do a remote uh, remote development of, of, film, of firmware, but uh, still have a system uh, at, my, at my office where I can uh, just uh, test images. And all, it also would be uh, quite uh, useful to, uh, to to be able to uh, automate uh, the testing of uh, of images on a real hardware to see if there was some uh, regression or if the yeah basically if change uh, broke broke something. But uh, yeah, I, I don't uh, wa I, w I wanted to have it uh, in a way that uh, neither the firmware image uh, nor the uh, bot design needs to be uh, cha changed for that. And al also yeah. Basically, that I can just set it up once, put it in some uh, in some space, and just have it, have it running there. And also for uh, systems uh, like the, uh, the the newer atom atom based, they use uh, a 1.8 uh, volt, volt flash, and not the usual 3.3 uh, volt. So that uh, should also be supported. So yeah, uh, what some people uh, do is ju just uh, plug a test clip on uh, on the target board. Connected to, to programmer, yeah, but uh, that might uh, even even uh, damage the system because uh, yeah, often uh, the flash is uh, directly connected uh, to to the same voltage rail as uh, part uh, of of the chipset. So wh when you connect uh, just just a clip uh, to the flash and power uh, power the flash chip via this clip, you also power up uh, some part of the board. And that uh, usually uh, violates the uh, power sequencing r requirements of the of the chipset. Sure, on some boards uh, there's uh, there's a diode in the uh, voltage uh, supply line for for the flash. There it's uh, not, not a problem, but yeah, uh, it's usually in mass-produced designs uh, they just leave out this diode and just put a zero ohm resistor there because it's half a cent cheaper. <laughs> Yeah. Also, the uh, the data lines from the programmer and the uh, the target system uh, might might interfere. So it's, I mean, it works when when you just uh, want want or it often works when you just uh, want to flash a board once. But for development, you you can't really use that. So uh, what a lot, lot of people use is the uh, EM100 uh, flash emulator. It's I think 400 500 dollar round round but yeah for for hobbyists it's it's rather rather expensive and also when you want uh, to test uh, l large amounts of systems for example well like th 30 systems or so you, w you want to see if uh, some some change uh, breaks uh, the film for those systems that gets expensive really fast and also the the old version you can get for a bit cheaper in, in used that I think it only works for up to 20 or 25 megahertz. So uh, you need to, uh, to make some changes to, to your firmware so that uh, the uh, SPI controller doesn't switch to like 50 me megahertz mode. There's uh, uh, also a new, s new system, the Spy Spy by uh, Tremel Hudson. It's, I think it's still a bit in development. It's yeah, basically based on a, a IS-40 FPGA and some SDRAM. But it also has uh, yeah, li limited maximum frequency because the, the problem there, there is uh, is the latency. Basically, uh, the the protocol from from the flash chip, you send the flash chip uh, an address, and after that, uh, after a fixed amount of time, I think it's I think it's one one uh, one one byte without data. You have to send you have to send the data, and when uh, when you store uh, the data in some DDRM or so, uh, latency becomes a pro problem there. Basically, you, you don't get uh, the the data fast enough from from, from the RAM to uh, send it uh, to the host when emulating an uh, SPI flash. That's um, I mean I, I tried uh, I first tried uh, to build my own SPI flash emulator and yeah that wasn't that easy. So yeah another another pro uh, another approach uh, would be the uh, spicelator. Basically, uh, the, uh, there you uh, you also you uh, yeah you also you use a, a clip to connect to the flash, but with the spice lighter uh, you can 
uh, you can ba basically isolate the uh, programmer from, from the system. So uh, at least when the system runs, uh, the programmer doesn't interfere uh, with the system anymore. But yeah, when programming, that still might be an issue. Yeah, so I, uh, most more or less based on that, I created the QSPI Max 2. Or yeah, it's the first the QSPI Max and the, then the second revision. Basically, uh, I put, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing in the, uh, do we have a laser pointer? No, uh, but basically that's, this is uh, the QSPI Max 2. On the main board, uh, I uh, removed the flash and uh, put some small interposer board th there instead. Then I put uh, the flash on a small PCB and connect that all, all together with the uh, QSPI Max uh, 2 in between and connect uh, the programmer there. Yeah, uh, that thing uh, uses a real flash chip so that's 100% uh, uh, compatible uh, with the protocol, and well, also, if the flash, well, it's, it supports uh, all commands the flash chip uh, support. And yeah, uh, the nice thing about uh, that is that the programmer can select if the flash chip uh, gets directly connected to the main board. So you can, I think I tried up to 50 or 60 meg megahertz, and also a quad SPI that just worked, and you uh, well, and the programmer can uh, say that the flash chip sh should be connected to the programmer. So basically, you can uh, uh, put the system in reset, connect the flash chip uh, to the programmer, rewrite the contents of the flash chip, then uh, connect uh, the flash chip uh, uh, back to the main board. It's just toggling uh, one GPI open at the programmer, and then uh, release the board from reset, and uh, you can execute the. The, uh, the newly flashed uh, firmware image and see if it boots or not. Hopefully it boots. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, it's uh, designed to be compatible uh, with uh, both 3.3 and uh, 1.8 uh, volt flashes. The programmer, however, uh, needs, al needs also to, uh, to be able to support uh, the different voltage because uh, the, the multi multiplexer di directly connects uh, the, uh, the data lines to either the board or the or the programmer, so yeah, the voltage level must be compatible. And it uses uh, two uh, ideal uh, diodes, That's all that are those two things. Basically, it's it's a, a P-channel MOSFET and, a, 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 and an uh, op-amp. So uh, when, when only the board is powered, the flash uh, and the multiplexer uh, get the power from the board. And uh, when uh, when the board is powered off, uh, but the uh, programmer wants to power the flash, uh, the multiplexer and the flash gets powered from the programmer, but uh, the current uh, can't flow back into the board. So that's uh, yeah, that you uh, basically you don't uh, you can't uh, accidentally inject some uh, current uh, in the voltage rails on the main board, so you can't damage uh, cause damage to the main board there. Yeah, and lessons learned from the project. Try to avoid uh, unneeded complexity, because yeah, it's for that use case just uh, just a simple uh, or just uh, six uh, mu multiplexes, uh, or two to one multiplexes are more or less sufficient. Then it's really important to optimize the hardware design for manufacturability. Like you say, uh, see here, uh, that board uh, has only components on one side. The first revision, uh, the QSPI Max, without the two, uh, had uh, the, the header to the main board uh, on the bottom side, and the header for the flash and the programmer on the top side. And yeah, basically, uh, that was really hard to, to manufacture, because uh, when, you, uh, when you put uh, that uh, through a pick and place machine and uh, a sol soldering machine, you can't really uh, glue the parts on the bottom side uh, to the board because they well, well, they don't have uh, that much uh, that much area where, where you can uh, where you could uh, put put the glue there and so yeah it's and, and they they are uh, relatively heavy uh, compared to the um, to the area where the connector is sol soldered on the board so basically the problem is uh, when you put it uh, to the uh, through the soldering pro process the second time the parts uh, on the bottom side are very likely to fall off 
So yeah, I had to do that uh, redesign with uh, just uh, compo um, with components on ju just one layer. Yeah, and it's also quite quite useful to talk uh, to your uh, field application engineers from yeah, the companies making the parts, because yeah, I've, I'm using some re really nice uh, 90 degree uh, angled uh, connector there, but it's. Uh, it's, it's half pitch, or uh, 0 0.05 inch pitch. That was yeah, not that easy to cut. Oh, basically, there's one manufacturer making making those. And also the connection uh, to the programmer. I wanted to use uh, uh, some other connector there. Uh, basically, this, this, this style of connector with a ribbon cable, but those ribbon cables are really expensive and sort of flimsy. But yeah, so I uh, went to the uh, flat flex connector that costs, I think, a third, or uh, with uh, the connectors in the cable, and yeah, also does the job. So yeah, that's the project is uh, open source. It's currently not not available to to be bought, but I want I want want it to be. So yeah, I'm still need to work on that. And, yeah, do you have any questions? Please queue up at the mics. Yeah, at least take the mic. I have a question. You said you had to put the board under reset while programming the flash. Does that require any additional wire that we didn't see on the photograph, or is a reset wire on the flash chip that goes back to the main CPU? Or did I misunderstand something? Uh, uh, no, no. You uh, you also need need to connect uh, the reset of the main board. Well, the board doesn't ha have to be in, re in reset to, uh, for the flash to be programmed. But uh, when you connect the flash to the programmer, you disconnect it f uh, from the main board, and that yeah also might cause yeah some weird stuff happening. I'm just wondering um, if you put the board on the reset with a separate wire. Yep. Couldn't you almost program it with a clip on? Because under reset, I would assume that the main CPU goes tri high C on the SPI wire so that your clip would not interfere with the main CPU and the uh, flash would be powered from the main uh, power supply on the board. Mm, uh, not uh, not all, all processors or system on chip uh, put, uh, put the connection to the uh, SPI flash in, uh, in high resistance mode uh, when they're under reset. Okay. Had had that issue, I think, with the network card. Okay, makes sense. Hi, Felix. Just a quick question on the pricing for the bomb. How much it would cost to build yourself? Parts cost. Part costs are, I think, between ten and fifteen dollars for for the whole set, but yeah, the the, the PCBs. Mm. Basically, here uh, it's uh, some. Uh, uh, it's not that, that well to see here. Basically, you, you need uh, some a special process uh, where there's uh, copper at the edges of the board. Uh, I've I have uh, I have a few few samples with me, so you can have a, have a look at it later. That has some. Initial uh, setup cost, uh, basically once for for the whole uh, set of boards, and yeah, the uh, the board itself it's uh, also a four, four layer board, so it it gets cheap when you order like hundred or thousand from it, but just for ten, it's it's a bit more expensive. And another quick question, because um, it's the Max, we couldn't use it to monitor the spy bust at the same time. Well, it didn't get the question. So is it because it's a MUX, we couldn't use it to monitor the traffic on the spy bus at the same time? Uh, 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 to, to monitor uh, what, what's on the on the spy bus? No, uh, the basically on, only the flash uh, can be connected to either the board or the programmer, but the programmer can't sniff uh, what's uh, uh, on the bus. But yeah, for this solution, it's it's just one chip that's readily available, so yeah, went that route. Uh, 
Right. I guess that's it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.